Three, two, one. Welcome to the Dope World News Podcast. Taking over your listening space, whether you're listening to us at www.overdoperproductions.com. Yeah. Spotify. Yeah. The Apple Podcast app. Yeah. And where it benefits us the most. Where is that? That's the Anchor Rap. Yes, sir. It don't matter who you thought it was. I go by Prestige. And you already know it's the nastiest nigga in the motherfucking world. Zen, a.k.a. the zeitgeist to everything motherfucking nasty. Who the fuck we got in here with us today, bro? Yo, we got the GOAT of engineering and producing Nirvana Nash. And we are just entertainers. And we also got the last born motherfucking pimp on the visuals, my nigga Titty Boy Nate. What's good? What up, dude? Yep, back with the most recent three-peat in history, we got C-Breeze. C-Breeze, good to be here, good to be here. And we also got another motherfucking special guest. The dopest motherfucking DJ in Michigan, my nigga DJ Kobe. What's good, bro? What's up, guys? He bro? beautiful. He Don't me touch up. me. Definitely, mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's real shit though. Um, we have at DJ underscore Kobe. I'm on Twitter and I'm on Snapchat. Uh, DJ Kobe. Uh, what, what's my? I got to do my AKAs like y'all did. You hey, do what you do, man. AKA, AKA, <laughs> uh, AKA uh, Young Pecorino, AKA uh, Quarantine Dream. Uh, <laughs> 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 Hey, and we also want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Yak Town Don't Back Down. Sean Preston was good, bro. So, 43 weeks, we still here. Man, nigga. Back like we never left. Sunday be coming quick as fuck now, pause. I love Sunday, <laughs> bro. Hey. Hey, to be surrounded by cats that I actually can have a discussion with. Exactly. Great Sunday. Look, and beats, I have to type characters out to talk to them niggas. It, like, <laughs> it, it beats sitting in the pews and hearing people shout and scream, run. Yeah. yeah like, doing rituals, eating blood. But, hey, this, this, <laughs> my, this out on that episode of Red Talk as a protector. Of his wife. That nigga looked like he had a stomach bug. He, you know he <laughs> was protected. <laughs> Listen, as wrong as she may have been yeah. in this situation, Will was not about to let her put herself in a compromised position. True. He'd rather take the embarrassment or the jokes upon himself than to have his wife be ridiculed this by is, the public. This is what I got to say. This is the only thing I'm saying. I'm going to let y'all get into it all the way. August has something. Because if he didn't, and they knew he didn't, then they would be just chilling. Exactly. August has something that he could show to people if he wanted to that's going to prove all of this shit is true. This is the thing, this, and this, I, this is my own personal opinion. I just think that, one, I think August is telling the truth. Like, the way he expressed that uh, shit, the way his feelings for her, like, that's was. a real thing, and it's based off, like, that's a real thing. But what I also think is that she came there not to clear the air, but to protect her image. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm this person, like, I got to make this look this way. Regardless of what me and him had, whether it was real or if it wasn't, then I got to protect the way y'all look at me. So this got to be perceived a certain way, regardless of what it actually was. Bro. And then when it come to Will, it's like, I knew the niggas had something going on. Like, that shit wasn't a problem. But, you know what I'm saying, maybe I ain't know all the details. And now that the world is talking about it, I want to know all the details. But one thing I can tell you for sure, 1,000% sure, that nigga Will don't want the rest of them details. Before you go, I'm sorry to cut you off. But bro, nigga, anytime any person get into a scandal with their wife or their husband, vice versa, nigga, it ain't none of our fucking business regardless, bro. These people is just in the public eye. But in reality, they didn't have to hide they can, you can hide as much as you want. This your fucking business. Yeah. So we all gotta keep that under that understanding abreast. No, that's but crazy. wait, but see, they use their image to appeal to us. No, so we put the, them in that position, so bro. If, wait, you're right. But if they don't appeal to us in a certain way, we not gonna fuck with them no more. And they need that so they can benefit. They, bro, they not fucking <laughs> benefiting. Oh, bro, listen, 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 listen. It wouldn't matter. If they were in a good relationship or a bad relationship, yeah. if we didn't care about Will Smith. No, that's facts. If we didn't care about Jada Pinkett, thing, singularly, though. singularly though. So when we put people on a pedestal, the same way I was talking about a few weeks ago, where if I, you put people on a pedestal, you expect them to motherfucking act in a certain type of life. We don't have the right to put them in that place though. The question is the fact that it's not August 4th. 
Oh no, no it's, it's not, not Jada fault neither. And it's not Will fault. It's Angela Yee fault. Oh, because man. Angela <laughs> Yee, Angela Yee came into this oh, conversation. Soft ass bitch. <laughs> DW. She looked like she DW came, in the she, face. She came in this in, into this situation interviewing her friend. Like her and August is actually friends outside. So, so you know the food. answer to this question before you ask her. And you know that the answer to this question you're about to ask is gonna turn the world upside down. So this is simply an example of her being irresponsible as a journalist. I've interviewed almost everybody in this room. TJ, have I per have I ever publicly asked you about your personal life? Never. Have I ever asked you about your personal life? Hell no. Have I ever asked you about your personal life? I don't and have this one. shit I know about all of y'all. So it's like, why, why? The thing is, like, she know, like, this is juicy gossip. Like, niggas is gonna love this. This is gonna get a bunch of views. She's this trying to get out of Charlemagne and Envy's shadow. At okay. that point in time was good. No. Them no. songs now is I not I think T.I. songs are better than Man, uh, hell 50 no. Cent songs. Hell right no. now. Name a 50 Cent song. And that's they translate. They translate into that music matters. Bro, I just said many men, 21 Anyone? questions. Okay. Bro. Give, me, give me three more. Right, just give me five. Mini Man, 21 questions. Window shopper. Window shopper. Motherfucking. Hell no. What? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let him finish his list. He got two more. What? Uh, 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 uh. What's that shit? What up, gangster? And then hate it or love it. That ain't his song. What? That, ain't that was a game song. Bro, he wrote the song and he's on it. In the, the versus, in the versus, in the versus battle. Seriously. But what they talking about in a versus battle? They gonna both have shit that they featured on. That have y'all not? You watched the versus? In a versus battle, Ti got better songs. Hell no, he got better Third beats. Five, you played his better, better. He got better beats. He got better songs. Okay. No, he kind of do got better beats. Better beats? I to do somebody that probably nobody is putting up in their legends list, quite frankly. Nah, for sure. Um, and I'm gonna go with Hitmaker. Come on. AKA Youngberg Young when he Bird. first started. Born Christian J. Ward, September 9th, 1986. Better known as Hitmaker or Youngberg. Was born in Chicago, Illinois. Another Chicago great, as we, we done seen. Shout out Juice. Something Man. water. Kind but of, um, all of them. previously signed to DMX Bloodline Records Sorry. and later signed to uh, Epic Records, his debut "Sexy Lady," which featured features wow. R&B singer Junior, released in April 2007 on his debut album "Look What You Made Me," was released in 2008. Ward is the vice president now of A&R at Atlantic Records, and. He had his three singles, Sexy Lady, The Business, and Thought Box. Well, oh, Sexy, Lady, on, Sexy Lady had uh, the goat on there, didn't he? Oh, Ray J? Yeah. <laughs> that's Sexy Can I? Oh, oh. oh. And that's Ray J's record. That, yeah. Bro, okay. Even want to do okay. That Sex, Sexy it. Lady is Sexy Lady. Be nice to know you. But, but I gotta move, move on. on. Move on. Move on. Yeah, it was a little, mm. but it was a time, yeah. Yeah. sexy camera. <laughs> but either way, started in Bloodline Records, moved on to his own thing, started making his own albums. Obviously, Sexy Lady was the biggest track that we all know that he had that was kind of like the one that put him into the box. Especially yeah, that was, just, the, the that sexy was lady? yeah, I mean, uh, Sexy Can I? Yeah, Sexy yeah. Can I. Mixtures. I mean, it's not a sex. He love the women. I ain't gonna lie. Dog, love the women. Sexy lady kids. Sexy lady was the joint, and then sexy cannot came because they tried to. They was like, you got this joint, you got this joint, but he was like, nah, he tried to spin it. 